This is the Lock Picking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a Centurion USA 60mm iron body padlock. It's the model SIPL060. I picked this up off of Amazon a while ago when it was the number one search result for the term high security padlock. So what we're going to do today is take a closer look at this lock and see just what level of security it provides. Now at first blush, it actually looks like it might be an impressive lock. We do have an iron body. There's a 10 millimeter shackle that's protected by a high shackle guard and a six pin key. Now an interesting note about this key is that the bow appears to be the shape of a quick set key. So you might think that you would be able to use the same key in a quick set lock, maybe key it the same as your door. However, the keyway is completely different. And in fact, where a quick set has five pins in this length of key, the Centurion spacing is completely different and it fits six pins in there. So despite the looks, this has no relation to a quick set. But there are some issues with this lock. Now, as I mentioned, it does have an iron body and I don't think that's a particularly good material for a lock body. The problem is that iron has all of the corrosion problems that you would find in a steel padlock, but none of the strength that you would get from a steel padlock. Conversely, it's a relatively soft material like brass or aluminum, but it doesn't have the corrosion resistance of those materials. Now it does look like Centurion tried to address the corrosion issue by putting a nickel plating on this. However, this is a brand new lock and you can already see there are chips in that nickel plating. So I wouldn't count on that plating keeping rust off of this lock for very long. Then we have the fit and finish of this lock and it's actually pretty horrific. If we look carefully just at the machining we can see at the top, you can see it looks like they absolutely chewed through this material. Definitely they were not using sharp tools and some of the edges are so sharp, like this one right here, you can literally cut yourself on them. So not a lot to be impressed with the fit and finish of this lock. Next, we turn to the shackle. This is a 10 millimeter shackle. And with any Chinese made lock, I make a habit of checking to see it, whether its claim of being hardened is in fact true. And I do that by taking a file and just running it across it a couple times. And on this lock, I did exactly that. And you can see we got a pretty deep groove into, into the shackle. So certainly the claims of this shackle being hardened don't appear to be correct. Now there's one other, I'll say unforgivable problem with this padlock, but I'm not gonna show you that until after we see what it takes to pick this lock open. So let's get some picks out. I'm gonna use top of the keyway tension with this little wiper insert. And you get this 18 thousandths Peterson standard hook. Okay, little counter rotation on one, counter rotation on two, got him set. Counter rotation on three, nothing on four, Counter rotation on five, nothing on six, back to the beginning. Little counter rotation on one, on two, and we got him open. So definitely some spools in here, at least four in slots one, two, three, and five, I think it was. But don't be impressed yet because there is a big problem that will let anyone get into this quickly. And it's not the fact that we don't have a ball bearing locking mechanism. This does have spring loaded locking paws in there, but you really can't get to them to open it up because of this high shackle guard. So I'll give them a pass on that. The problem has to do with the construction of this lock. Now in many padlocks, you'll have a removable core like this that's set into the lock body. And you can see that the body of the core and the body of the padlock are separate. This does not have a removable lock and the body of the core and the padlock are actually the same thing. So in making this lock, what they do is they drill straight from the top all the way down this really wide padlock 
and that's where they insert the driver pins, the key pins, the springs, and then they cap it off with a little rod. Now we've got a ton of space here, so you need to fill it up somehow, and that's where they made the mistake. You essentially have two options. The first is to put a really long rod in there and a short spring, or you can put a short rod and a long spring. And the latter appears to be what they did in this Centurion. The problem with that is that when you leave a ton of room in this channel, there is enough space to lift both the driver pin and the key pin above the shear line and open the lock up. And they actually make tools just for doing that. They're called comb picks. And the way you use it is insert it into the keyway. Sometimes it can be an issue, but if you rock it, it's not too hard as is the case here. Once you get it into position, you lift it up like that and turn it and we just open this lock. Let me show you that one more time. Get it into position, lift it up, turn, and we open this up almost as fast as if we had the key. So I see that as a completely unforgivable sin, even putting aside the fact that our shackle isn't hardened, we have a lock body that's going to rust and the fit and finish is atrocious. The fact that I can get into any of these locks quickly using a tool like this is simply not acceptable. So that's all I have for you on this Centurion USA 60 millimeter iron body, body padlock. Again, it's the model SIPL 060. If you have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.